this will be a little bit of a change of pace. We are out of the bushveld and into the Mpumalanga Highlands. Having a look for some more montane species, things like wrinkles, grasses, it's hopefully a bird gatherer or two, and generally any other cool geckos and lizards that we want to try target. So we're going to get after it, flip a couple of rocks, and see what we can turn up. This is a quite through legless skink. You can see how he's just burrowing underneath this rock. He almost knows where he's going. He goes in and out of these little burrows. So let's have a quick look at him. It's an average size one. We've seen a couple of these in the past. And his little derpy looking face. They got good looking little lizards and not seen all that often not photographed too much so we're gonna grab a flat shot or two of this guy. Well, there's a little find. We have a white throated legless skink, Contius albigularis. It doesn't seem to have a white throat at all. So for the wind mountain life. Yeah have a look at that little guy. Just under this little rock here. We're gonna pop his rock back and pop him back under the rock. And here you go, this is what we've been looking for pretty much for the last three hours. Ed and I had a real tough time trying to find this guy and see just a little bit of the habitat we found it in. This of course is the Burgadder, different to the ones in colour anyway that we see in the Western Cape. These in Pumalanga and Escarpin Burgess, much smaller, beautiful chevrons and you can hear he is pretty grumpy. Well, I just flipped a really nice common crag lizard, Pseudocodalus. Little notice. He is grumpy, but he is absolutely gorgeous. So of course, we get some photos and just go back under his rock. This is the Transvaal dwarf chameleon we got last night. I just came back to the site, but as you can hear, there is a raging brush cutter or something in the background. But these males are absolutely gorgeous compared to slightly more dull females but yeah I'm just gonna let him go back and he's like teeny there's a black mamba let's see how long he is it's probably only about 2.4 maybe 2.5 some say that's long enough So we are now in Eswatini, the kingdom of Swaziland, as it was once called. We are looking out for any herbs you can find. It's lightning and thunder in the distance, so big drop in pressure. So the snakes should be on the move. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. So walk around camp a little bit, hopefully not get too close to the fence. And let's see what we turn up tonight. It's the first herb of the evening. So, welcome back. Well, that was a red toad, but I see there is a tropical house gecko right over here. Again, there was a tropical house gecko. That is a hemidactylus. They should be all over these buildings where I'm walking around. And here's a little unexpected find, just walking around these outbuildings and we have an East African shovel snout. So he's got that little yellow orangey snout, the paired row of dots down the back. And these guys will cruise around at night looking for hard shell gecko eggs, so pretty much specialist feeders. So I just went back to my room to change my batteries and look what I see. Shame. I don't know what's happened to the snake, but it's a rhombic egotip, but it is dead. I actually thought it was alive at first. Looks like it was coming out of the tree, and then something must have just happened to it. It's only a couple of days old. A record nonetheless. Rhombic egotip.
Let's build the Scarborough. So Ed and I are just out here in Iswatini, in Swaziland. I just walked around this corner. We've been looking at these thatch buildings for snakes. And I just found this telescope, this Eastern Tiger snake, just cruising along the floor like this. How cool is that? Check out this bead of eyes. So unfortunately my battery died last night as we were picking up that tiger snake. But I just kept it to the morning because it's right here in the camp. Have a look how good looking this snake is. I'm pretty sure this will be the first time we have seen this species on the channel. So not a bad place to be. Telescopus semi-amulatus. Very similar to the Bogia and some of the other cat-eyed snakes around the world. Long slender bodies, rear fangs that really do like to bite when given half the chance. They feed on sort of geckos, frogs and they'll even take nesting birds and have been reported taking bats. One of the most beautiful snakes in the country. So just walking around these aloes looking to see if we could see anything and I got a big old southern permanent tree frog. I mean, you can see this guy is absolutely gigantic. Have a look at his cute little toe pads. These guys are actually quite unique amongst the frog world here in, South, well, here in Iswatini, where we currently are, a country just outside of South Africa. They actually build these really large foam nests above the water where they lay their tadpoles or lay their eggs, which form into tadpoles and drop into the water. And this in reference. Oh. <laughs> Just in reference in my hand, how big he actually is. I don't want to disturb him too much, but I'm going to grab my camera quick, get a few pictures of him sitting here on his aloe before I let him carry on his day. And here's a new one for the channel. This is a East African shovel snout. Beautiful little harmless snakes that feed exclusively on gecko eggs. You can see if we zoom in here, look at that little yellow tip snout. Typical white paired dots down the spine. And yeah, this guy was just moving around some rocky walls last night. And we found the smelly mammoth. So have a look what I just got crawling on this tree on a very overly sized branch. Very skinny flap neck comedian. This is a female. Not entirely impossible that she's laid eggs recently because she is really underweight. She could do with a couple of little crickets and some insects to bulk up. But yeah, I'm not going to disturb her at all. I'm just going to let her do her thing. We saw quite a few of these guys in some of the early videos. So this one can just go on and do its thing. And this is the ever-present red toad. Quite a common species among this sort of dry savanna bushveld habitat. Although we've had quite a bit of rain here, so these guys are absolutely everywhere. And one of the favorite soup food source for our good friends, the Mozambique's fitting cobra. So hopefully we'll be able to spot a couple of those before we head back to South Africa. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. I knew it was dead. This is a pretty large black mamba, just in between two sugarcane plantations. They don't have much hope in trying to cross the road. Can we move this guy up the road? Carry on. Another surprise find. I got this little spotted bushnake just sitting in the rafters of this bird hide. Didn't get the catch on camera, but decided we can just let him be. We see quite a lot of these guys, and as soon as they go in, in these rafters, they absolutely disappear. See, so he'll go on hunting little reed frogs, things like tropical house geckos and dwarf geckos. Whoa, brother! You just got this beautiful female eastern hinge tortoise just sitting on the road, just as we were driving through this little forested section. These guys often get hit by cars, so we are just going to pick her up and let her go back into the forest. It is sort of 8.30 in the morning, it's humid, it is hot, and I just got this little guy 
sitting in the bush right about there. It's a beautiful Eastern Natal green snake. One of my favorite species of Phyllothamnus. These guys are just absolutely incredible. They cruise through these coastal forests like no one's business, smashing little reed frogs, the hemidactylus, the tropical house geckos, pretty much any little lizard and amphibians, they will just absolutely decimate them. The only thing that these guys have to worry about in this environment is the forest cobras and of course the twig snakes or the vine snakes, which are high on their list for lunch. You can see he's got beautiful yellow ventrals, emerald green uppers, often get confused with the Wormslang and the green mambas, but you can see this guy's got quite a small head, bright yellow eye, decent size one. They get a little bit bigger than this, but nice chunky size adults. So I'm gonna grab some photos, which always proves to be a bit of a mission with these guys. They don't sit still. And then we are gonna see what the rest of the day holds. So I've taken a little while to compose myself but have a look at this this is the holy grail of south african herping it honestly does not get any better than this this is the east african gaboon adder or the east african gaboon viper and we're just out here near cozy bay right on the mozambican border and this snake is absolutely ridiculous just sitting here in the leaf litter just off the side of a little trail. The snake is scale perfect. There is not a scale out of place on this animal. Beautiful dusty pinks. And although it looks quite obscure and quite vulnerable, just in the leaf litter here, once it's in the denser stuff amongst all the root systems, these snakes are almost invisible. This is I've hardly seen any of these snakes. I've seen two since I've been herping here in Southern Africa. Absolutely ridiculous. East African Gaboon Viper. I'm going to grab a couple of hundred photos to make sure I get something that's banging and then we'll do a little video on just the release. So I've just been getting some footage and of course shooting a stack of stills of this hatchling or Really young East African Gaboon Adder. You can see how beautiful these dorsal markings are. Completely geometric. Um, you can tell it's a really young snake. I know it's difficult for scale, but you can see just how big the eyes are on that head. And of course, they need to grow into that head a little bit more. Just flipped another species of Scalotes. This is Scalotes Lestigifer, the crystal dwarf branching. Good morning, it's our last day before I head back. Just busy packing up all my gear. And this brother is just here, right outside my front window of the accommodation. This is a marble tree snake. There's a arboreal species pretty much specializing in eating geckos and things like tree frogs and all the other kind of critters we've been after the last couple of days. They always got quite an attitude on them. A little quite grumpy guys. Rear fang species, not dangerous, but you can see he's really grumpy this morning. So I hear all the birds going berserk. I don't know if the birds are giving him a hard time. We're just going to pop him back in the sort of forest. As you can see, it's right on the edge here. So that's obviously where he came from. But just before we snap a few photos. This is a better look at this marble tree snake. And we just got just on the corner of the room. Gorgeous animals, full of attitude. Reminds me a little bit of the Eastern Tiger Snake. Sort of like cross to the Herald Snake. Full of attitude, arboreal species. Can't go wrong. What a good looking snake. I just finished getting some photos. No, <laughs> this guy's so bitey. Just finished getting some photos of this guy. It's been a crazy couple of weeks here in Northern KZN and Niswatini, and that's pretty much a wrap for now. And then we head back to Durban for a little while, 
So until then, I'll catch up with you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.